The Akara FP1 presence sensor was probably one of the most hyped and talked about smart home devices of last year, bringing in a new form of presence sensing technology into our smart homes, or at least it would have. I was pretty much the first to get my hands on the FP1 for review last year, and whilst that video took off and the response was lots of excitement and even more hype, the problem I complained about back then was that it wasn't really available outside of China, meaning unless you did what I did and imported one from sites like AliExpress, there was no way to actually get your hands on one. Until today. Akara has listened to my feedback and implemented a number of changes I complained about on the original, as well as the community's feedback when it comes to availability, and released a brand new version called the FP2. And this time you can actually buy it. Let's see if it can live up to the hype of its predecessor. Full transparency as always, Akara did send me the FP2 for me to review and check out. And I do also want to mention that many of you will be aware that I make my own presence sensor called the EP1, which among other things also has a millimeter wave sensor on it. And I certainly don't intend for my opinion to be biased in any way, shape or form, same as with any review that I do. And I think I do a pretty good job of remaining objective and giving you my true unbiased experience. But I did just want to mention that before we get into the review, again, in the interest of transparency. So the Akara FP2 has had its design changed a little bit over the previous FP1 to make it thinner and sleeker with the FP2's main body significantly thinner than the FP1, though it is a little bit taller and wider than the original. This time they went for a full circular design in their classic soft touch Akara matte white plastic that they are known for, and a stand that allows you to orientate the device, which is magnetic for sticking it in the optimal location, though I did personally find the magnet to not be quite as strong as I would like it to be. The stand also collapses, leaving you with this nice, pretty compact little puck. I do actually really like the design personally, super clean and just blends in to most people's houses, though my one tiny bugbear, which funnily enough is something I did mention on the original FP1 review, is that if you mount the FP2 on a desk, it makes the Akara logo upside down with no option to rotate it, which makes my OCD to sad face Akara. Come on. They did however fix another of my complaints and add a USB-C port for power instead of the permanently attached USB, key, USB cable on the FP1. Big thumbs up for doing that, that is a huge improvement. But again, my very slight nitpick here is that when you have it on a desk, the USB-C port faces up, meaning that the cable comes up and you can sometimes see it visibly over the top. Again, really minor nitpick, but something I thought I would mention. Speaking of the USB port, however, I actually thought my unit was dead on arrival because I plugged it into my Ugreen desktop charger with a USB-C to USB-C cable and it just wouldn't power on. Kept trying it a few times and just nothing. Finally, I switched over to a USB-A to USB-C cable on the exact same charger and it booted right up. This reminds me of the issue that the Raspberry Pi 4 used to have before that was resolved. But I only have one unit at the moment, so I haven't been able to check it on another FP2 to see if the problem is the same, but something I thought I would mention. The Akara FP2 houses a 60 to 64 gigahertz millimeter wave sensor, which is the same frequency as the FP1, but it does use a different, more feature rich sensor compared to the original. It's got a 120 degree field of view, supports motion zones, interference sources, and multi person detection. And it also houses a new Illuminance light sensor on the front too. No idea where they got that from. No, I'm just kidding. That's actually really cool to see and really useful for automations. The FP2 also uses Wi-Fi this time around instead of Zigbee, which is interesting to see and something we will take a look at in a little bit. Finally, the price of the FP2 comes in at an RRP of £100, though it is on sale at the moment at the time of launch for £83, which is quite a significant price increase over the original FP1, which had an RRP of around £65, but could often be found for under £50. So we will need to make sure that the FP2 is worth that big price increase. 
And again, the big thing here is that it's actually available to buy outside of China. You can buy those on Amazon in UK, Europe and the US, all starting at the time of launch, as well as many other places, which is a huge advantage over the FP1. Of course, I'll have links to where you can buy the FP2 down in the description if you want to pick up a few for yourself. A quick explanation for those of you who may be unaware of what millimeter wave is, is that they are essentially motion sensors. Now you might be thinking, okay, but I have these motion sensors like this one from Akara. So why does millimeter wave cost like six, seven, eight times the price? Well, the problem with traditional PIR sensors like this is that they are great for movements like someone walking into a room, but not so good for small movements like someone sitting down typing or watching TV. You may have even experienced this yourself where your motion lights keep going off when you're in the room because you're sitting at your desk and not really moving too much. Millimeter Wave solves this by detecting teeny tiny minuscule movements, even as sensitive as to detect breathing when you are asleep, making it a really good solution for spaces where you tend not to move as much, like a living room, bedroom, or office. I mean, you might be doing a lot of movement in your bedroom, but that's like short bursts. When you add the FP2 to the Akara app, it will take you through the setup and installation, allowing you to configure the sensor for your room and environment. And because it's Wi-Fi rather than Zigbee, you don't need an additional hub to use it, which is really nice. The FP2 has three modes that you can configure it in, just occupancy, which will detect presence or not, personnel positioning mode, which detects real-time positioning data, or fall detection mode, which can alert if someone has taken an unexpected fall. Once set up, you can then map out the space you have the sensor in, including adding zones, areas, and furniture to create your room in visual space. This does take a little bit of fiddling around to get it just right, but there are templates that you can choose from to help you get started and help you get everything created. Then you'll notice that as soon as you move around in the room, the position will update in almost real time, usually around one to two seconds or so behind on the map, but a really, really cool feature and it works way better than it did on the FP1 and is a really good and nice way of giving you a clear visual indication of what's going on and where. If someone else also then walks into that space, Another advantage of the FP2 is that it can track multiple people at the exact same time, which will be represented on the map. Nice. You'll also see the light level reported on the device too from that built-in light sensor. The thing that's really cool about zones is actually how fast it can transition between zones within just a second or two. So you can walk around and it will actively change between zones as you move around within just a second, a second or two for that transition to actually happen. You can then use these for some creative automations with lighting, for example. These zones and areas can be used in Akara's app automations where you can create the varying triggers like if someone enters a zone, if they enter a zone for a certain period of time, if they enter or leave, or they can walk towards or away from the sensor, if they fall, as well as a few other triggers. So really nice level of automations here and really utilizing those features on this improved sensor. One other really useful feature I like is to set ignore zones, which was a problem with the FP1 for things like ceiling fans or plants. So now with the built-in zone editor in the Akara app, you can create what's called an interference source, which basically lets you say, Hey, this is an area that movement occurs in that is not actually human, so please just ignore that. And it will completely ignore that area so it's not constantly triggering the sensor. The FP2 also works with Google Home, Amazon, and HomeKit. The thing I really like that they've done here is that not only is the present sensor as a whole available as a device, so any motion detected by the sensor at all is gonna be shown in those ecosystems, but also each zone you configure on the FP2, they've actually passed through those zones to all three platforms as a sensor of sorts. So you can see in which zone a person is in, which is really cool, and then create automations based on those zones. So you aren't missing out on any functionality there. And of course the light sensor is also passed through to all three platforms too. 
You don't get any of the information like the direction as well as the people count, which is a little bit of a shame, but at least you get that zone information so you can see where presence is detected. The HomeKit integration, of course, makes it so that we can connect the FP2 to Home Assistant. And again, that provides you with the presence sensor along with the light level and the zone information. And because it is HomeKit, everything is really nice and responsive. Unfortunately, despite the claims that the FP2 is controlled locally, I found that blocking the internet access on the FP2 causes it not to work in the Akara app anymore, with the device immediately trying to talk out on the internet. Usually Akara devices do work without internet access inside of the app, but unfortunately this one doesn't, and it doesn't even work through HomeKit or Home Assistant with the internet blocked either. Hopefully this is just an oversight and something that they can fix ASAP. Now there is a lot to unpack and dig into here, specifically when it comes to performance and all of the settings and modes, so I think I want to do a full a dedicated follow-up video on that if you are interested, leave a comment down below. But some observations I've had so far have been these. Firstly, it does well in a regular room like a living room or office, managing to keep track of you for long periods of time, even through objects, which as we know, millimeter wave can do. But I did occasionally get the presence sensor to be detected stuck uh, so detected on and it would stick there for a while when I was clearly out of the room for quite a long period of time, but the sensor would still think that I was stood in the room at the doorway where I exited. That did happen to me a couple of times and I think Akara maybe is aware of that as they implemented a reset button in the settings to let it be unstuck, uh, but generally it does really well and um, is totally usable for tracking you in one of those types of rooms. However, I then tried it for a couple of nights in our bedroom while we were sleeping and I wasn't that impressed with the results, where there were quite a few gaps in coverage, even though the sensor isn't far away from us at all and it has a really good view uh, of where we were sleeping. Now, in fairness, I do need to do more testing with the various settings for that particular situation, so please just take that with a grain of salt for now. But the FP1 for me in particular, in that exact situation, on the exact same position, did perform better. In terms of how fast the sensor reacts to presence detected, so detecting you when you actually walk into a room, it's pretty good. Not the fastest I've seen, not as fast as a regular PIR to react, I don't think, but it's certainly not slow like some of the cheap millimeter wave sensors on the market, and I would say that it is faster than the FP1. More testing is required there to get a definitive answer on the speed, but those are just my initial thoughts as far as the presence detection goes. I do also really like how fast the light sensor checks in, which are updated within a second or two of the light level increasing or decreasing, which makes the lux values actually useful. Really great job there. However, I would like to see more granular control over things like the cooldown period for presence, maybe more fine control over the sensitivity rather than just the three settings you have now, and also control over the distance would be really nice too, but again, just some minor nitpicking. If we take a look inside of the FP2, there is a rather surprising addition of an ESP32, which is super interesting, did not expect to see that, meaning we can likely see some people start to hack their own firmware onto the FP2 too in the future, which will be really cool to see. Finally, the question I'm sure many of you are wondering, is the FP2 better than the EP1? Now, obviously I'm very conscious of the clear conflict of interest here, so take this entire section for what you will, but I do see these as kind of different devices in their own right, mainly because the EP1 has a regular PIR in addition to the millimeter wave, and when I first started making the EP1, I did slightly wonder if having the PIR there was overkill, but now that I've shipped nearly 10,000 units of EP1s out into the wild and helped hundreds of people fine tune them for their particular rooms, the inclusion of a regular PIR makes it much more versatile than just having the millimeter wave alone, and I'm really glad that we included the PIR. Millimeter wave is very sensitive, sometimes almost too sensitive, and so you will inevitably have it be triggered on by something that you didn't want it to be triggered on by. 
and having that PIR there just gives more flexibility as well as a greater detection range. The EP1 also has a temperature and humidity sensor in addition to the light level and is cheaper, but the FP2 has its fancy zones and interference sources and fall detection as well as a few other features which is a step up for its millimetre wave, though it is missing some basic millimetre wave features like distance control. Though the EP1 does have a removable millimetre wave sensor for future upgrades however. All in all, the FP2 offers a lot of improvement over the original FP1. It's got a lot more features in its new millimetre wave chip and has potential for more features in the future. It's using Wi-Fi rather than Zigbee and will get a future Matter update. It's got the light sensor, it's got the removable USB-C cable and the software is much more refined in my opinion than the previous FP1. But all of that does come at an increased price point which you will need to decide if that is worth it to you personally. And that's it for the new Akara FP2. Really, really interesting device and love to see Akara having actually listened to feedback from the FP1 and implemented it into the FP2. It's so refreshing to see when companies actually take on board reviews and then actually do something about it. And that new millimeter wave sensor is clearly a beast in terms of new features and is clearly very capable. Again, I do want to do more of a deep dive into the performance and specifically once I've got some time to really put it through its paces as I think it needs its own video to talk thoroughly about that. But really like the features that they've implemented so far. And man, Akara is really killing it in terms of new products these days. They are absolutely knocking them out of the park with their release, recent releases with the P1 and then we had the curtain driver and then the doorbell and now the FP2 and there is still even more to come. So it's a really exciting time for new smart home products. Anyways, that is it for this video. What did you think of the new FP2? Does it pack enough features and performance for its price tag? And are you thinking of picking one up? Do let me know down in the comments. Please do dro drop this video a like and get subscribed if you enjoyed it. And I will see you in the next video.